Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out the new Bosch smartphone hub along with the Kobe app which connects to it and increases the functionality of that. We did a video a couple months ago with Steven from Bosch talking about it and just some early thoughts. Now that I've spent some time with it, I wanted to do a full-on walkthrough of all the functionality and give you a better handle on how it works and hope you guys enjoy. So to start out, I just wanna go over the smartphone hub on its own without the app, and then we'll get into the app um, and how that improves the functionality of the display. It was explained to me that the smartphone hub is kind of similar to the Purion display and that it's just kind of dumbed down uh, just all the basic information that you might need. So to turn it on, we're just gonna hit the power button just right on the right side here. Just turn that on, takes a couple seconds, and you'll see some, information here. You got the Bluetooth sign, meaning that it has the Bluetooth connectivity, the lights which are on. This particular bike's a speed bike and the lights are always on, but you can make that switchable. With that, you'll uh, actually have to use the, the thumb controller to turn the, the lights on, similar to the, the Purion display, just holding that plus button down for a couple seconds. You'll get the miles per hour, uh, you'll get the assistance level. This is the four levels of assist. So you can go to eco, tour, sport, and turbo mode. You have the mileage range depending on the assist level that you're in, the battery percentage, and the little battery bar, which will, you know, the percentage gives you a better idea of what's really going on there. In order to really increase the functionality of this display, you're going to want to use the Kobe app. Kobe is an uh, is app and it was hardware um, that was developed by the company Kobe, but since then Bosch bought the company. They're continuing to keep the Kobe app alive, but they've integrated the hardware into their system, which I think is, is a more elegant solution, especially having this fallback function of this display that works without your phone. Well, I'm not gonna go through the function of downloading the app. I hope that you guys know how to do that. It's pretty basic. Just go into the app store, search for Kobe, that's C-O-B-I. Once the app is downloaded, you're gonna get to this screen. So we're gonna click this, get started. You could go through the demo video. You can kind of cycle through some of these different things. It's gonna tell you some of the different functions of the app. You got exclusive biking. Uh, so navigation, fitness, music, weather, real-time data, or just calling a friend, which is, you know, the basic gist of, of what it does. Turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Um, and then we have the, the different um, connection points, which I didn't mention. Right now on the bike, we have the universal connector, but you can actually put your phone inside of a case and connect it that way. This is the old thumb controller, which is uh, not used on the, the Bosch system, but that's if you did a standalone uh, Kobe display. And then this uh, ambi sensing lighting system, which again, that's for the more standalone, older version of the Kobe display. We're not using the Kobe display, we're just using the software. So we'll just click into get started. Um, I already have uh, a couple of accounts here. I'm gonna connect to my personal account, which I already uh, previously had connected to this bike, but we're gonna go through that uh, function again. So, as you see, you have this Kobe Bike Hub on the top. You're not gonna use that one. You're gonna use the bottom one, the smartphone hub. The Kobe Bike Hub on the top, that's for the older generation of the Kobe display, but we're gonna use the smartphone hub. So we'll just click on that. And then we're gonna click on this little icon, on, uh, the, we're gonna click the power button on the side of the display, get into this Bluetooth pairing mode and keep the phone pretty close. And you could see that it's connected. Now that it's connected, we'll hit next on the phone. Now we're activating the hub, worked like a charm. Getting some Twitter messages here, that's fun. Um, yeah, so follow us on Twitter if you're uh, into that sort of thing. And then let's talk to your bike. Let's hit OK. You're going to uh, select inside here, city, something, urban, whatever. We'll do, we'll do urban. And, uh, and then 
on here, since this is a recent Mueller bike, they actually have some of their own branding and some extra features that exist. And I think that over time, they'll probably build out more functions on here, but we'll just uh, say, let's roll it, click next. You could change the color. I'm just gonna put my bike name is loads of fun. We'll call it that. That's uh, if I can get over my uh, dyslectic typing here. All right, let's go. This is what we see when we go into the app. We're actually gonna connect now. So I'll actually move this over onto the bike and we can see what that looks like. So we can tap the controller to dismiss this warning. I know not many people are reading these things, but uh, one of the things they say that you can put this do not disturb mode might be a good idea. I probably should have did that beforehand. Maybe I wouldn't have got those uh, Twitter notifications, but we'll just roll with this. So uh, we're gonna tap the controller to dismiss, and now we get into the uh, Kobe app. This is something basically now we're just increasing the size of this display. We have some additional information and additional functionality. So we have the the distance, duration, speed. These are uh, tripometer type details. Now it's not holding any of the information because we just signed in, but if we went along on a ride, this is gonna hold some of that, uh, that different information, average speed, that sort of thing. This is gonna be the regular speedometer. We got the batteries. This has two batteries. It's a dual battery bike. Uh, battery's running a little bit low. We should throw that on a charger. Um, we have the headlight showing that that's on. And then this is the fitness uh, function. To get into the fitness function, we're just gonna uh, tap the select button, which is this uh, diamond shaped button here. And then, so this is one of the nice things when you first sign into the app, it'll kind of give you this little walkthrough. Once you uh, do that, then it'll, it won't do that anymore. So you'll just have to remember that or I think you can go into the settings and ask it to do the walkthrough again, but we won't do that. So uh, this is gonna be while you're riding the bike, you can get the watch. Um, and then I believe this is your speed that's gonna show up there. You can go to the right if you connect a heart rate monitor. One of the nice things about the Kobe display actually in comparison to the Kiox display is it will work with the Apple Watch. The Kiox display won't work with the Apple Watch because the Kiox needs to connect directly to that heart rate monitor and the heart rate monitor, specifically the Apple Watch, connects through the phone. And so because the Kiox doesn't have that uh, interface, it's not gonna work that way. So that's one nice function that you can use the Apple Watch, but you can also use other sort of heart rate monitors if you wanna do that. You get the RPM, this is your cadence showing how fast you're pedaling. And again, as it showed before, in order to get Back into um, the main screen, we're just gonna hold this select button down for a couple seconds. So now we're back into the main screen. I'm gonna cycle through to uh, one of the additional uh, screens here. And I'm just gonna hit left. So we have uh, here, this is our music. Right now I actually have this connected to the Spotify app on my phone. And if you had uh, Bluetooth headphones connected, it will play on them. Um, but you can also play directly on the phone, just selecting here. If you hit select again, you can play music. It won't play for too long. Don't want those copyright issues. But you can also um, skip through to different songs, stuff like that. It's not my playlist, it's just, uh, I felt like uh, playing electric feel would be appropriate, but I don't know. Yeah, give me, I, if I had to explain the joke, it's not that funny. All right, um, let's go to the next one. So, should have went to the left, but uh, this is the navigation. So if I, right now you're just seeing a compass. We're not in any sort of navigation function. We're just seeing a compass, and but if I, select this, we can go in here and we can uh, select a route. Before I select a route, I wanna look at just a couple of the different map functions. You can change from 2D to 3D. It's just kind of the angle that you see the map. And then you can hit uh, plan route. Uh, one thing I will say, in my experience, this is 
not as good as certain mapping systems, say like uh, Google Maps or something like that. My preference still will be to use Google Maps. This is uses the Open Maps API. And what I found is that it doesn't have all bike routes and stuff like that on there. And for me, that's a big issue because I'm riding mostly for commuting. Sometimes I'm riding in areas that I don't know, I haven't been before, and I really want to have a route that's as safe as possible and to be able to stay on those, those bike paths. And I found that they don't have the most up-to-date data on there. So for certain areas, it's probably fine and it's really great, but in, in many areas where they're constantly changing the bike infrastructure, I find it doesn't function as well. For many, it's, you know, it's better than, than most things. Certain things that I think is really cool about this is you can actually use uh, voice to text to search for things. Um, but again, you might find that searching for things, it's not as intuitive as using like Google or Apple Maps. So something to consider. I, I hate to really, you know, ding them on that, but I think it's important to, to know and to be clear of like the function and uh, utility of this system. So for now, I'm just gonna click one of the favorites. Oh, I thought I had favorites in here. Maybe not. I don't know if the dealers are gonna show up. Let's see. I think I only recent Mueller dealers. I don't know. I don't know if I have that turned on. Yeah, see, this is some of these things. It's not really uh, so dialed in. I don't know. I'll just put in here 100 West Broadway. This is my my store. All right, take a second here. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, that's it. So, okay. So this is kind of cool. Uh, fastest, shortest, quietest. The, this, is a, this is a really nice function, particularly for, for biking. As I said, you know, they do have a lot of the bike infrastructure on here. And when possible, it can really help you to take advantage of that. I, I know these routes here, so the fastest route, this is gonna put me on a road here that's, it's not a protected bike path, but it's, there is a bike path, which is nice. The shortest route um, is the same as the fastest, which is cool. And the quietest, what's gonna happen here is actually gonna move me onto a protected bike path pretty much the whole way. And then up here, it's a separated path, not protected and then protected. This is actually one of the interesting things here. So since, um, I guess since they put this in here, there is a protected bike path here. So it's kind of taking me off the route. So this is th those sort of things that maybe, you know, on, on Google Maps, uh, it does have the most recent uh, bike paths on here, but they, they don't have it on here. So I kind of wish they did, but, um, Maybe they'll find some other way to, to update these things a, a bit better and, and give you really the, the best route, not um, just the best route they have available. But if I just go into select, and you can see this is going to tell you where to go. Um, so it's basically going to take you down a path. This is all protected bike path, and um, it's pretty cool. So. That's the gist of the navigation. It's gonna update as you go along, that sort of thing. Uh, so I find that, that that works pretty well. I'm gonna go into the one other detail, uh, which is contact. So you can actually make phone calls from here. And in order to do that, you just uh, select the contact and you can cycle through the different contacts here. You can select the contact and then from here you actually have to press it on on here um, in order to dial the phone so um, I think I might have actually canceled that instead but if you called it that will that will dial the phone phone number so uh, you'll generally want to use that with like some sort of Bluetooth headset uh, I would be mindful that certain places you might not be actually allowed to use a Bluetooth headset. I know in New York, for example, you can only use one side, you can't use two. 
Some other places you might not be able to use any at all, so something to be mindful of. One thing that is pretty cool is a company called uh, Sina. They actually make a helmet that has the phone connectivity inside of it. I think we'll start to see more and more companies integrating this sort of technology, and that's a, a nice way to go. I'm gonna hold that button down, get out of here. And I'm gonna show you one other detail, uh, which is how to change the assist level, just as you do on any other Bosch system, plus or minus. So plus is eco, tour, sport, and turbo mode. And that's, that's most of it there. We can click this. This is one thing that's kind of cool. So throughout your navigation, you're gonna see what the weather might be and how it might change over time. And actually, as you get over here, it's getting closer to um, uh, you know, sunset. So it's gonna start getting darker and that's kind of what it's starting to show there. And so outside of that, we'll, we'll just stop the navigation for now. I wanna go into the manual just to show where that is. I'm not gonna to get too far into the manual, but you can see some of the basic uh, functionality. Uh, you can't cycle through this here apparently with the thumb pad, but you can do it this way. So it'll tell you some more details about what you can do with the app. And so that's, that's really the gist here. So the one other thing I didn't go over is walk assist. I want to show how that works. In order to activate walk assist, you're going to need to be in an assist level. I'll do it in eco mode and you're just basically going to tap the walk button and then you're going to hold the plus button. I'm actually not going to do this because the bike's on the stand and we're trying to film here, but that's the gist of it. The one other detail I think is really important to share is that this can charge your phone because I will say using this can actually deplete your battery, maybe more so than if you weren't using it, which makes sense. But there's a, a connector that comes for most standard phones. They have lightning cable, USB-C, and micro USB. They all come with this smartphone hub, so you're able to charge your phone, and it, and it does a good job at it. I know some of the displays don't actually put out enough power, but this puts out plenty of power to charge your phone and keep that going. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it to be helpful. I think it's a cool display. Oh, one good thing I didn't mention is that it is available as an aftermarket upgrade. So you can change from a previous display to the smartphone hub. The one thing to note is it won't work with e-shift. So any bike with electronic shifting won't work with the uh, Kobe app or smartphone hub. So that's, that's a good thing to note. And if you have any questions or if you're looking for one, just reach out to us. We're always happy to help and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a future video and see you soon.